So, uh, one suggestion I do have that uh, you were t they were talking about like front loading the like class with more like fun and engaging stuff actually about game design. One way I think that could be done is through like a very quick like maybe one week long game jam like thing at the beginning of the like beginning of the school year so that instead of like instead of doing like one month long thing that we do all the blog post stuff we just do a very quick like game jam thing where everybody just like gets to make a game quick teams everything's done quickly just so that they can front load the class with a fun activity for everybody to do there's no blog post stuff about it it's just to get used to the class and then after that we can start doing all the session stuff that's my idea uh, you're next in line. No. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm just spectating. You re really? Why are you up here then? All right. Uh, an issue that wasn't really talked about in their thing, but was made was a lot more present in ours, was the distraction of students by other students. Uh, we want to, with the uh, leadership that they. Just talk that way. Oh. Uh, with the leadership that they uh, added, we think we might want to start trying to do that with. Students that are being a distraction, but yeah. Exactly. All right, so I got uh, two things to say. First of all, I do agree that um, we should go with like a kind of game jam systems. I think that would be a lot more entertaining to new students. Um, I had a counterpoint to uh, in the previous one. They said maybe drop construct, and while I do think uh, Unity is much better because it's industry standard and it it's just for only getting a year in new students and people who are like not as passionate about it would not get work done they would either they would have nothing done at any point i don't think they'd get very much work done and i think mainly if you ha if you build unity teams with new people um, the there would be like one person that really knows what they're doing doing the entire thing and then there would be like four people doing borderline nothing um, and then my other point was that I think that in general um, we need to have some sort of like list of rules for making games just like a guideline because I think there was a lot of things that needed to be um, like more stressed that we can't do when making games um, because with a lot of the early games People don't really know what they can and can't do, so they just need something to guide them that way. One thing that I did mention in a film before this is the pre-production, where instead of putting the tutorials there first, I mean, especially even I, we kind of just find a tutorial online, we put some notes down, and then we never really use it. Um, we can put it afterwards for um, post-production, giving more time instead of focusing as long on pre-production. And for post-production, we can put the notes we did use or things we did use to help us and how it helped us instead. That way we have a guarantee of something we did use, because some of us use videos uh, of YouTube later on ra uh, rather than the one we actually took notes on, because we want to get into the game. Um, I think that would help save time and help people have a better idea of what they could use for tutorials. Thank you. Bye, 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 bye. Yeah. Yeah.